Hello and welcome to a discussion that will provide an overview of issues related to reporting inventory. After viewing this video, you should be able to understand the terms associated with in-transit inventory and describe the type of company that uses the periodic or the perpetual method. You should also be able to account for inventory using the periodic and the perpetual method and record purchases of inventory using the net or the gross method. Inventory consists of items held only to sell to customers. A company either purchases inventory from a supplier ready to sell or manufactures inventory themselves. Accounting issues associated with inventory primarily relate to inventory in transit, which is between the seller and the buyer, or determining the value of inventory that is reported on the balance sheet and the value of cost of goods sold reported on the income statement. Inventory in transit has been shipped and has not yet been received by the buyer. Inventory is reported on the balance sheet of the legal owner and the legal owner is determined by the terms of shipment agreed upon by the seller and the buyer. The most common shipping terms by far are FOB destination and FOB shipping. FOB destination means two parties have agreed that the buyer owns the inventory when it is received and the seller owns the goods while they are in transit. FOB shipping means the buyer owns the inventory at the point the goods are shipped and therefore the buyer owns the goods while they are in transit. Inventory in the warehouse is counted and valued at the end of the period. The initial valuation only includes inventory in the warehouse. The accountant must review invoices of purchases and shipments just before and after a period ends to determine if an adjustment to inventory is necessary for the goods that are in transit. Goods on consignment are not legally owned by the company storing the goods and should not be reported as inventory for that company. Goods on consignment is common when one company owns the inventory and another company provides the service of taking orders and shipping goods to customers. Inventory is reported on the balance sheet at the total cost of all inventory items owned at the end of the period. The accountant determines the cost of each item from invoices and amounts paid to suppliers. The cost of inventory includes all necessary costs to acquire the inventory and bring it to the desired location for manufacturing or to the warehouse. The cost of shipping to the buyer is called freight in. Freight in costs are generally recorded in a separate account for tracking purposes. Purchases and freight in are added together to get the total cost. This example illustrates how the value for inventory that is reported on the balance sheet is determined. The company sells four different items. Quantity is the total quantity counted in the warehouse at the end of the period. The cost for one is the total amount paid for each unit. Cost for one multiplied by the quantity owned at the end of the period is the total value reported on the balance sheet. Assume the company had a total of 20000 in beginning inventory, plus the purchases gives an available for sale during the period. The difference in the 20000 of goods available for sale during the period and the 8500 in the warehouse at the end of the period is the cost of goods that were sold during the period. The warehouse costs to purchase and store inventory are reported on the income statement as operating expenses. There are three major transactions that change inventory, purchases, returns, and sales. There are two methods that are commonly used to record these inventory transactions. A company may choose to record a journal entry to the inventory account each time inventory moves. This is referred to as the perpetual method. A company may choose to account for the total change in inventory at the end of each period. This is referred to as the periodic method. The method used is dependent upon the type of accounting system that a company has. The perpetual method is commonly used by companies that sell large quantities of many different items and have sophisticated computer systems in place to track inventory movement. The system records a journal entry to every change in inventory. The system indicates inventory is purchased, returned, and sold. Tracking of inventory is often accomplished by using barcodes and scanners. 
A perpetual method uses an inventory system that reports the quantity and cost of inventory on hand at any given time during the period. The inventory account is adjusted as the transaction occurs. However, the account balance may not equal the amount that is actually on hand at the end of the period due to human error, theft, or damage to goods. Inventory is counted at the end of the period to determine the cost of all inventory that's actually on hand. A final journal entry is made to adjust the inventory account to be equal to the actual value in the warehouse at the end of the period. The periodic method is commonly used by small companies or companies with small quantities of inventory that do not have elaborate computer systems to track every move of inventory. Nothing is recorded to change the inventory account during the period. Inventory is counted and valued at the end of the period, and the inventory account is adjusted to be equal to the actual value of inventory on hand at the end of the period. Inventory no longer in the warehouse is assumed to be sold and is reported as cost of goods sold. Companies that use the periodic method record changes to the inventory account only at the end of the period. The purchases, freight in, and purchase returns accounts are used in place of the inventory account. Accounting for inventory movement during the period is recorded without using the inventory account. The purchases account, an expense, is used to record the purchase of inventory. The purchase returns account, a contra expense, is used for inventory returns. The freight in account, an expense account, is used for the cost of acquiring inventory. The total amount of the change in inventory and the total cost of goods sold is recorded only at the end of the period. The sale is recorded as it occurs. However, the cost of inventory for each sale is not recorded because it is not known at the time of the sale. At the end of the period, the inventory account reflects the same amount as the beginning of the period. Inventory actually changed with purchases, returns, and sales, and the inventory account must be adjusted to the correct value at the end of the month. At the end of the period, the inventory account is adjusted and cost of goods sold is recorded for the cost of all goods that are no longer held at the end of the period. Amounts recorded to the purchases account and the freight in account and the purchase returns account are transferred to the cost of goods sold account. The ending balance in the inventory account is adjusted to be equal to the value of inventory in the warehouse at the end of the period. The difference in the beginning of the inventory account and the ending inventory account is transferred to cost of goods sold. Items no longer there are considered to be sold. The accounts used and the timing of recording inventory movement is different for the perpetual method and the periodic method. However, both methods result in the same value of inventory reported on the balance sheet and the same cost of goods sold reported on the income statement. The cost of goods sold is computed by first adding the cost of all goods available for sale, which is ending inventory in the warehouse and subtracting that to get the cost of goods sold. The difference in the items available for sale and the items that were not sold are the cost of the goods that were sold. Let's compare the journal entries made for the two different methods beginning with the periodic method. Remember that the inventory account is not used until the final adjusting entry at the end of the period for the periodic method. Purchases are recorded to the purchases account. The cost of shipping to the buyer is reported to the freight in account. Returns are recorded to the purchase returns contra account. The sale is recorded at the sales price. However, the cost of goods sold is not reported because the cost of the sale is not known at the time. The most important thing to remember about the per perpetual method the most important thing to remember about the periodic method is don't use the inventory account until the end. 
The most important thing to remember about the perpetual method is that the inventory account is used to record each transaction. Purchases and freight in increase inventory. Returns decrease inventory. The sale and cost of goods sold is reported when it occurs. The perpetual inventory computer system tracks and knows the cost of the inventory that was sold in each particular sale. An adjusting entry is made at the end of the period for both methods. The adjusting entry gets the value in inventory and the amount of cost of goods sold correct for the period. Let's look at the periodic method adjustment first. The three expense accounts that are used in place of inventory are zeroed out and moved to the cost of goods sold. The beginning inventory account, which is incorrect, is removed and the correct inventory amount at the end of the period is added to the inventory account. The change in inventory is considered to be a change to cost of goods sold. The perpetual method has an inventory balance that has been adjusted each time inventory moves. The balance per the account is compared to the actual value counted in the warehouse and the inventory account is adjusted to the actual amount and then the difference is cost of goods sold. Inventory per the system can be more or less than the actual inventory in the warehouse due to theft or human error. The inventory account is debited to increase inventory and credited to decrease inventory and cost of goods sold is always the other account used. The inventory account is a debit when the value of inventory counted is actually higher, and credit if inventory counted is actually lower. Remember, this one can go either way. Purchases of inventory can be recorded under the gross method or the net method. The purchase is the other side of the sale and the related accounts receivable that you learn to account for using the gross and the net method. When it comes to inventory purchases, the gross method is used when the company wants to keep track of purchase discounts taken. The net method is used when purchase discounts are intended to always be taken. It is considered an extra financing cost if the discount is not taken. Freight is always recorded and paid for at the gross amount under both methods. Let me say that one again. Freight in is always recorded and paid for at the gross amount under both methods. Let's look at an example of the gross method and the net method. Assume inventory was purchased for $64,000 plus freight of a thousand and a 1% discount was offered if payment is made within 10 days. $6,000 was returned after the purchase and before any payment. The purchase, the freight, and the purchase return are all recorded at the gross amount. If payment is made within 10 days, the discount is taken and only 99% of the purchase of 58000 which is 57420 and 100% of the freight is paid. The purchase discount is only on the inventory purchase and freight in is always paid at 100%. If the discount is not taken, the purchase plus freight less the return is all paid at 100%. Under the gross method, the purchases and freight account are always recorded at the full amount. The difference in the cash paid and the accounts payable is the purchase discount. Under the net method, purchases are recorded net of the 1% discount or at 99%. Freight is always recorded at 100%. The return is also recorded net of the 1% discount. If the discount is taken, the balance in the account's payable amount, which is the net amount, is paid and there is no difference. When the discount is not taken, more than the account's payable at net is paid and the difference is recorded to interest expense, a financing cost because they paid later than expected. And that should, the 580 should be on the debit side. After viewing this video, you should be able to understand the terms associated with in-transit inventory, describe the type of company that uses the periodic or the perpetual method, account for inventory using the periodic and the perpetual method, and record purchases of inventory using the net and the gross method. Please log on to studymyaccounting.com and work through practices you learn for examples of how to record the transactions related to inventory discussed in this video. Then work the practice test. 
Please write out your answers and check your understanding to the answers provided. Thank you for being prepared for class. It is very much appreciated.